what's up guys i know it's been a long long time since i posted a real video but uh working on the car for the winter there's one more track day i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm gonna go to it or not but um today we're gonna drop a couple more pounds i want to make a carbon hatch so i'm probably just going to time lapse the actual carbon part because it's just going to be like real repetitive laying layer and layer and layer but uh once we get to the finishing and trimming i'll walk you guys more through the so right here i have my four layers of carbon already laid out here's the hatch i'm just doing the layover technique same thing i did for the roof and the hood uh basically i clean this up really good it's waxed like three times and then it has a pva on top of it that helps release the actual resin from the part uh just put some little uh silver foil tape over the holes So basically, I'm going to mix up the resin. I'll show you guys everything that I use and lay this carbon fiber down. All right, so I'm going to stop the time lapse here. Uh, as you can see, I still need some more resin in these areas here. It looks pretty dry. Uh, a little bit up at the top, maybe a little bit here. But I have to mix some more up. Every time you see me leave the garage in the time lapse, I'm mixing up resin because if the resin gets too cold, it kind of gets like jelly and it doesn't want to uh, mix as well. So I'm doing that in the house. So I got the final layer on. This was actually one big piece, 60 by 60. And looks pretty decent it's going to need to be trimmed up but uh i'm happy with it it's about functionality not looks for me so this is the epoxy resin that i used it's made by venom carbon it's a two to one and i got all the carbon fiber from composite envisions uh both of these things were purchased off of ebay i think the carbon fiber was 36 or 46 a yard and it was a gallon of resin for like 110 bucks so if you need the links just comment below all right so here's the carbon hatch uh it's not done being layered with epoxy yet but i kind of just want to cut the shape out so i'm going to be using a oscillating tool with a wood plastic metal bit basically i'm just going to come around the edges like this and cut all the way around uh, just gonna have to be careful right here where this rubber is and once we get that all the way around we'll finish epoxy on the other side when you do this please make sure you wear long sleeve gloves and some kind of breathing protection because you don't want to be breathing in the little shards of carbon fiber dust I just want to take a second to show you how well this tool cuts you look at those lines pretty good I usually go back with a sander and just clean up these little edges like that. But here's the back side. All right, so it's been a couple days since I cut it. I just washed most of the dust off of it. I probably shouldn't have removed it and cut it yet. Should have went straight into putting a thicker layer of epoxy on it. Uh, but you live and you learn. This is my third part. So don't want to start over because it's expensive to throw away. And I really don't care how it looks. I just want the functionality of it. But when I demolded it from the hatch, uh, right here had some stress cracks in the resin. Uh, I went around and did a thick layer of epoxy around the edges, not super thick, but I wanted the edges to stick down real good. So I started getting stress cracks here because it wasn't thick enough. All this here is still textured. Um, you can see some of the stress cracks along here, right in here. This back flat part, like the hatch that would normally be the color of the car, has a pretty good layer of epoxy on it because this is what was left in the cup. So the top and the side does. Uh, so right here it needs to get sanded a little bit, but you can kind of see where it still needs epoxy around here. Most of this stuff will clear right up. Um, right down here, 
this will clear up, but also needs epoxy down here on these edges. It's a little bit dry just because I didn't feel like mixing more up. I just wanted this thing to dry. But there's some spots, like these white spots that could sand out because just like I said, has a good amount of epoxy. But here's the hugest mistake. I don't know what happened here. Maybe it wasn't fully cured and when I cut it, some dust got over here, but I just tried to wash this out really well and it's not coming, so. You live and you learn, not a big deal. It's too expensive to throw away and start over. I think I got like three or 400 bucks in this already. So I'm more about the functionality of it than how it looks. Um, underneath, not too worried about how this looks, but I am gonna put some bracing underneath later on once we start to clean this up. So right now I'm just gonna probably get out the air compressor try to blow some of the extra air off of this kind of let it dry out and see how it looks and then we'll probably mix up some more epoxy and do the thick layer the whole thing and then see how it turns out from there so basically to get to the point where I'm at now I clean the carbon with dishwashing liquid and water just to get all that dust off and I took, went through and took a heat gun and I dried the crap out of this. I probably spent like 40 minutes drying this. So, um, right now I'm at the point where I'm just trying to add a thick layer of resin across this. Hopefully I have enough left and I don't have to stop in the middle and then order some more because I'm not sure if there's anyone local that actually sells resin to me. So, basically I think this is about 300 grams of resin. I'm making sure I get the part that didn't get any on it first. Um, so far, it's the part where I told you it looked like crack, like with the big dust stain on the passenger side of this, looks decent. So hopefully it'll dry decent. I could already see like a little spot of discoloration, but see how it goes from there like I said before I really don't care how this turns out it's just cool to have carbon for me I was just gonna paint over this but all my friends keep saying oh you spent all this money and blah 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 make it look nice I'm no professional if this was done the right way it would be vacuum bag but I don't have the equipment to do that so DIY for life so this is where I'm at right now. I uh, ran out of resin, not a big deal. I just ordered some more. Uh, over here where it was all discolored, it looks a lot better. It's just one spot like this area right here that still looks discolored in person. Camera makes it look weird because it's like super glossy. But this is where I ran out right here. So I just ordered some more. It should be here in a couple days. And I'm just gonna go over this section here and any low spots, you can kind of see where it's like uh, textured still here. It's like uh, the carbon cloth is like sucking it in. So once I get this all done again, I'll go over all those low spots and then sand the whole thing, look for any more low spots, clean it, add a little bit more epoxy, and then we should be good. But if that part where the glass is turns out good which I'm really hoping it does I'll paint this whole part just like how the stock hatch is painted and just leave the glass part carbon I think that'll look pretty good and I'm probably going to end up redoing my wing mounts so I don't have to cut so far down have an ideal in my head so I decided not to finish epoxying the hatch until I figure out how I'm going to mount the hinges on here so basically this is a factory hinge it normally sits this part at a 90 degree and it has two bolts that go into the side of the hatch i do not have anywhere to bolt my hatch onto so what i did was have a buddy at my work weld these little plates on right here it didn't do the greatest job but 
I should have just did it myself, but it'll work because this hatch only weighs seven pounds. So basically I'm gonna bolt this down and go put the hatch on top, go inside the car and kind of mark out where these are and kind of see how far the gap is between this and the back side of the hatch. And hopefully I can glue this into place and then carbon over the bottom side of this to make it uh, more structurally sound. So that way when I lift the hatch up, I'll still have the hinge motion. Uh, also decided I'm gonna put some arrow catches down here. These are just factory holes that I widened and I riv nutted them to an M10 by 1.5. So those riv nuts will sit here. I mean, sorry, the arrow catches will sit here and here. And if you're wondering what these little things are, I was just trying to come up with a vent to kind of relieve some of the air pressure underneath of this because I don't want this to act like a parachute with the windows down and catch and just rip off the car because this is pretty thin. But I'm not sure how I feel about these. I was looking at putting them at the bottom here or maybe at the top, but that's down the road. I always get ahead of myself. So let's start fooling around with these hinges. Getting started mounting the hatch, I pretty much just taped it into place to make it fit perfectly. Um, still gonna have to do some shaving in some areas, but that's fit and finish, that's last. So right now I'm just putting in the arrow catches, uh, about to cut out the hole for the template that I just drew, and then we'll start on the hinges next. Got the arrow catches in. Fitment on this side is pretty good. This one needs just a little bit of adjustment. I can do that through the pen. So right now I'm gonna go in the car and show you what I plan on doing with this hinge. So I'm sure this video is all over the place, but I decided to start sanding it first before I do the hinges, because if I do the hinges, they're gonna be permanently attached. And I wanna still be able to put this on top of the original hatch, so I'll be able to sand it. I fucked up somewhere, look at all that white shit in the carbon. But if I sand the shit out of it, I can clean it up. Another 10 hours probably of sanding. So I've been sanding this for about an hour. And you can see all these white spots in here. This whole back window was filled with those, but I've just been sanding it out. So hopefully it'll turn out pretty decent. If not, oh well, we'll paint it. It's getting there. Yeah, it's almost there. It's so many little spots that from a couple feet away you can't see, but shit like that. All these little ones. But there's some parts where it's getting really close to the weave. Like that. Right, so I've been saying this thing what seems like forever. But most of that white that you've seen in the last clip is out. There are a few spots that still have white in them right here. Like this is down to the weave, so I don't want to go any further with that. But this is a race car. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Um, I'm probably just going to end up epoxying this over one last time to fill in any low spots and to cover up the bare spots on the weave like that. I mean, there's some imperfections. Every time I've made something carbon, I've been trying a different technique and it seems like I'm just getting worse. The roof turned out the best, the hood, not too bad. This is terrible. But for the amount of money that I have in this, I'm not gonna start over or throw this away. So we're just gonna finish it. So we're at the point now, I'm about to lay another layer of epoxy on here. I'm done sanding it. It's never gonna be perfect. I should have went about this a different way. I should have never cut it until the second layer of epoxy was on. But this is my third carbon project, so you live and you learn. There's gonna be a few white spots. I know this right here for sure, and maybe a little bit in this area. Most of this other stuff will turn black once it's wet. So 
uh, went over it and wiped the whole thing with wax and grease remover. And right now I'm just going to mix up some epoxy and just put a heavy layer on it. And then we'll go from there once that dries tomorrow. So this is what it looks like once that epoxy's all dried. Tons better than when we had all the white patches in there. If you remember, there was a mistake here, so I just epoxied in the Rev Hive sticker. But all in all, it's pretty good. There's a couple spots where I have to go in to touch up because it still feels a little bit dry, like here. And right around here somewhere. And then once all that dries, then we'll go through and wet sand all these little lines out from the squeegee and the resin one. So I'm pretty terrible at filming. So the, I think the last clip is me doing the epoxy. So I've been working on trying to get this mounted up correctly. It fits pretty good. I'm gonna put the arrow catches here. I have hinges on the top. They're unbolted right now, but. And I did make a, um, some bracing underneath. So let me pull this down and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So this is what it looks like with all the bracing added a rectangle here giant x right here and whatever you want to call this shape so i laid these two bracings two different ways because i've never done any bracing like this so i'll tell you each way and which one i wouldn't recommend so basically i cut out styrofoam same kind of like insulation foam for doors taped it in place with the silver tape went around sanded like about an inch all the way around then I laid epoxy on top of the styrofoam, then took the piece of carbon, sat it on, and tried to like squeegee it out like I did the actual trunk. But that leaves bubbles and stuff like that because carbon doesn't like going over like a 90 degree angle. So I this looks okay. It's still stiff, but it doesn't look as good. On this side, cut a giant X out, taped it down, but then I'll put painter's tape over top of it because I use spray adhesive and that eats the foam. And then I took the carbon and I laid that onto the glue and got the edges down. This actually looks a lot better than this does. So I would recommend going this way. You can see this came out pretty good. There's some spots where I could have probably squeegeed afterwards, get a little resin off, but it's all good. I'm not even gonna sand this or anything. I'm just leave it like this. And then for the hinges, I just took the factory hinge, welded about four inches by two inches onto it. I epoxied it down and then I put the carbon over it when I did all the rest of this. So right now, these hinges don't sit flush, if you can see that. So I'm gonna probably tape around the edge and then put epoxy underneath it there so I'll get a good bond and it won't be as flexible all right so now i just cleaned up the back of this and i laid down some clear coat this isn't the clear coat i'm going to use on the other side but this is just some cheap walmart clear that doesn't yellow so either way this shouldn't get a lot of sun this is just to smooth everything out So we're getting to the point on the hatch project where we need to redo the wing mounts because how it was set up before across the top of the trunk it was cut across the top and the side i really didn't like that um the spare hatch that i had that's the one i cut up but basically i have an idea in my head how i want to do this i want to just build a one by one square tube frame coming straight up like this and then we'll brace it off probably over this way. So right now I'm gonna start cutting metal. I already cut one six inch piece. Uh, I need to put the hatch on and take a measurement from that point to the bottom of the hatch. Last clip I was talking about building some brackets. So I had built this right here. Um, it bolted to the strut tower bar, came down here, same on this side, but it was wobbly left to right and if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it right. So pretty much cut all this out, got rid of it, shaved everything down really smooth. This is the original plate. This is going to be hard to cut out because it's all welded in. So everything's grinded down nice and flush now. So this is what I came up with. 
I know it probably looks pretty crazy, but I'll walk you through it. So I'm gonna have these quarter inch plates, which are gonna be welded to the frame rails. This is five inches. It's pretty much exactly, because the frame rail is like a C channel with little lips on the side. So this will weld perfectly to make it like boxed in. Um, same idea with the two posts coming up. I had offset this so it sits back further. Got a little gusset in here, X'd it, same on the other side. And the uprights aren't finalized yet because I still gotta, once I get this all welded up and uh, put in a car, then I can uh, cut this down to get the height that I want. But now this doesn't wobble left and right at all. And this is only tacked together in a few spots. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and fully weld this and sit the whole contraption in the car and get the wing lined up left to right. Um, one thing I'm a little bit worried about, but I don't really care that much is I already cut holes in the top for the old brackets. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing is if those don't line up exactly, is I'm just going to make some flat carbon fiber pieces, cut a new slot in there, and just rivet it over top. All right, so I got it all squared away. It's not welded yet. I just got to weld that base plate in. But basically, took a level off the end plate straight down, uh, measured from the side of the tail light here to the level on both sides. Got that measurement. That's even. Uh, took a plumb bob off the top down to this blue line which is six inches off the mayhem bar and i just used their welded on logo on this side because it's six inches so plumb bob great on both sides so basically now i'm just going to come in here clean up some of this paint around here and i'm going to start to tack this in and i'll take the wing and stuff off and the uprights and i'm not going to completely weld around this i probably want to just do couple one inch welds welds aren't the greatest but it'll work i mean this thing's super solid i don't want to move it around because i don't want it to uh shift its position and once we get it welded in and the uprights are off we'll close down the hatch see where these brackets fall and if we have to cut more holes in the carbon hatch so be it um once that's all done, then we'll go through and sand all this down with probably like a thousand grit and be ready for clear coat, hopefully. We're gonna redo the roof too, since this has some imperfections on it. So I just had that bracket tacked in. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna fully weld it because it's like super strong right now. I just wanna show you the dimension on it. So this really isn't going anywhere. Upwards, downwards solid i'm pretty happy with the outcome kind of use a lot of trunk space but only throw tools back here when i go to the track anyway and i probably won't keep this crossbar so yeah i'm pretty happy with it but it does need to get painted and yellow line so i'm gonna have to open up the trunk a little bit more So this is what it's roughly going to look like with the wing. I still have to cut it, cut it down a few inches, but everything fits pretty good. Like I said, I want to make some plates to fix this. I should have never cut it first, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, air latches or air catches, sorry. And then I added this uh, button down here to, cut, to kind of put, pull it in. The back bolt's not tight. But yeah, everything lines up pretty good. Wings on here good. Does rock. Let me see if I can back and forth a little bit. I'll probably just add a couple more welds. That'll probably tighten it up. But left to right, nothing. So I'm pretty happy with the way it's coming out so far. I'm going to pack it up for today. Um, pick up the camera tomorrow once I cut down the wing mounts. And... Hopefully we'll be good. Then I can wrap this video up. I made my patches. <clears throat> and uh, 
carbon fiber piece for the exhaust. So ever since I moved, I've been pretty much terrible at making videos and it's because I have a garage now and I don't have to have the car back together in one day, like when I was doing the videos consistently. But uh, pretty much after that epoxy coat and I did the bracing underneath, I went ahead and built a whole bracketry system for the uh, chassis mount wing. I did cut the holes kind of wide, so I added these little plates on here. I don't know if you can see that. But then I went ahead and sanded it with 180, 220, three something. I pretty much worked my way all the way up to a thousand. So we're pretty much going to lay down some clear right now. Just got to go over it with some bug and tar remover or wax and tar remover just to clean everything up, make sure there's no contamination. And we'll close the garage door up, put this exhaust fan on and use the 2K clear. And then we'll see how it looks from there. So after I cleared it, it doesn't look too bad. Kind of looks a little streaky because I just wiped it down because it had tons of pollen on it. But most of that white stuff is pretty much gone. I'm pretty happy with the outcome. I know it took me forever to drop this video. I probably had this footage for like four months. Making this hatch wasn't too hard. Super time consuming the way I do it. I'm sure there's other techniques that allow you to get this done much faster. I've been sitting on this footage for months. Uh, but I guess it's time to start trying to make videos again. I got some stuff coming up that I want to make videos for. But um, everything's pretty good. Little patches for the holes turned out all right. Everything's pretty solid. Nothing flexes in the middle. So I'm pretty happy with it. The wing stout shakes the whole car when you pull on it. So if you guys have any questions about this, feel free to leave them down at the bottom and I'll definitely try to get back to you. Or if you need to know where I got any epoxy or anything from, just let me know. And if you do, shoot me some messages on Instagram. Let me see your carbon fiber projects. But until next time, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.